when I started seeing people collapsing on the field of play, when I started seeing football matches every weekend up and down this country being stopped because of it, medical emergencies in the crowd, in numbers that I'd never witnessed before, I had to say something. And I took to, to social media and copied in the PFA and FIFA Pro because I felt like they weren't taking these things seriously. It wasn't normal. I spent 17 years as a professional footballer and not once did I see anybody that I played with or trained with have, a, have an issue with their heart. Now, obviously, there were a few high-profile ones after I retired. Uh, Mark Vivian Fowey, just after I retired, Fabrice Moamba, a few years after that. Uh, and you remember those because they they were such rare occurrences. It wasn't just in football it was happening. Nobody else seemed to be particularly bothered about it. I put out another tweet, <laughs> copied in FIFA Pro and the PFA, asking, uh, were they not a little bit concerned about what they were seeing, given that they are responsible for their, for their members? Um, and they have a responsibility to those players for their welfare and their and and yet nothing nothing was being done. There wasn't even any talk about it. And yeah. within ten minutes of putting that tweet out, I got a phone call from Bobby Barnes, and I knew Bobby, and Bobby was working at the PFA, um, uh, and he rang me up and he went, "Matt, I said, all right, Bobby." He said, and "I said, um, he said, oh, that tweet you put." I went, "All right." I said, "What?" He said, "Well, I'm head of FIFA Pro now." And I was like, awkward. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I went, yeah. He said, uh, he said, what you put out there? He said, it's not accurate. And I went, what do you mean it's not accurate? I said, I'm telling you what I'm seeing. I said, you can't tell me it's not accurate because I'm watching it with my own eyes and I'm seeing players in numbers that I've never seen before in my life collapse on the football field, clutching their chests. Uh, and he went, well, no, he said, I've got the numbers in front of me. It, it's always happened. It just doesn't get very much publicity. <laughs> and I was like, what? I said, come on, Bobby. I said, listen, I said, you played the same time as me, more or less. So you're a bit older than me. But did you know anybody when you played that had collapsed on the field of play with chest pains? And and, and he and he went, oh, Mount Vivian Fowey, Fabrice Mambo. And I went, let me stop you there. I said, we both retired by the time those happens. I'll ask you again. During our yeah. careers, did you did you know of anyone? And he couldn't name one. And yeah. I went, you can't tell me I'm wrong. So I'm seeing it with my own eyes. I'm not even saying, and I, and I wasn't, I, I wasn't even saying that this is being caused by the vaccine. That's not what I said, and I never once said that. What I said was, there's an increase going on. You need to be investigating to see what it is. Because it might be the after effects of, of COVID. It might have been. But it might be the vaccine as well. But the fact that you're not willing to investigate tells me that you know what it is, and you don't want to know. You don't want everyone to know. Yeah. Because otherwise, if you didn't, you'd be investigating it, hoping that everyone will forget it, and it's just crackers. So I, I ended up having a, a discussion with um, a couple of doctors that I know. Uh, um, who were prepared to have a meeting with the FA to put to them what they felt was happening as well. Um, and I had a meeting with the with the doctor at the FA. And um, they're the only re- so I asked for a meeting and, and Dr. Asim Malhotra um, was prepared to come on the Zoom call with me with the doctor from the FA and put his findings uh, to her. Um, so... The only way that she actually agreed to have a meeting with me was if I agreed that whatever was said in that meeting would not be made public. What have you got yeah. to hide? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's just telling me you've got stuff to hide. So I agreed. And we had the meeting. And uh, and I've never discussed what was said in that meeting. But what I did do is after that meeting, whenever another footballer had collapsed on the field of play, I would send a little message to her and go, Here's another one. Here's another one. And here's another one. Uh, and eventually, and I think it's November of last year, about a year ago now, uh, I got an email back from her responding to one of them. And uh, she was quite matter of fact about everything. She said, thanks for um, keeping me uh, informed. And uh, she said, as you know, footballers are no longer being encouraged to have any more vaccines. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? Have I just read that properly? As you know, how would I know? There's yeah. been no announcement about this. Nobody's made any big announcement going, footballers no longer. And I was like, 
wow. And I and I felt like I felt good because it it meant that footballers were perhaps going to slow down collapsing the numbers that they were because they're not having any more vaccines. But at the same time, I was like, wow, nobody's nobody's made that. You were so big on the announcements of, oh, look how many footballers are having vaccines. And now you've stopped recommending it to the, the players. Yeah. Nothing. Silence. Nothing. Mm, yeah. Just an email to me to go, yeah. as you know, I didn't know. So that, that, that was that. You can catch the full episode here and you can subscribe to the channel here.